fans, and welcome to another edition of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the Sunday, July 29th races at beautiful Hastings Racecourse. We do have eight on tap. Should be a great day. Should be a great crowd out. I believe it's mascot day, uh, Is it? Oh, too. it's right, too. Don't yeah. forget. Like always red a redhead or something. Yeah, it's always head. yeah. He's a fast one. He's a fast redhead. Quickly rising <laughs> redhead. Uh, yeah, always great turnout for that. Great crowd, a lot of fun. Uh, bring the family out for uh, great day races in the sun on Sunday, and a, a great card on tap too. Including, as you mentioned, the mascots. A little more handicappable. The mascots is as the wiener dogs. You know, Joey. Joey's just a cinch. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah Joey yeah. wins every year. But at least with the the mascots, uh, it could be anyone's race. You might want to look at them in the paddock too. Some are a little yeah. bit heavier than others. A little others. wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to the first on the Sunday program. Got to feel the seven. Seventy-five hundred dollar claimers to go six and a half furlongs, and wow, what a race! You got Quentin's Destiny dropping yeah. in. You got Charter Hill back in sprinting. Yeah. Yeah, tough race. Uh, I've gone to the six horse Quentin. Quentin's Destiny uh, just finished winning for seventeen five, and uh, where does he resurface? For ten thousand less, and yeah. that's uh, ooh, a little bit of a concern. But uh, the horse got to be live in here. I'm going to take him to win it to put the seven Charter Hill. If uh, Quentin's Destiny doesn't run his A race and doesn't uh, run to his, at least close to his capabilities this afternoon, I think Charity Hill might be the one that can can win the money. So I'm going to put him in for second, and I put the three horse, the speedy lookout Dubai, who just beat a non-winner as a three field, but I just like the way yeah. he did it. It looked like a horse on the improve, so, uh, and he's got speed. I went uh, six, seven, and three in the Sunday opener. I agree with you on the top two. Quentin's Destiny looks like just too much yeah. for these horses to handle. Uh, Charter Hill, back sprinting, as you mentioned, looks, uh, he fits in here very nicely. Uh, in the third spot, I took uh, Mr. Collaborator out of the Troy Taylor Barn. You can never throw them out. And uh, he was a horse who was just lights out here last year, uh, just kept winning and winning and Six winning. Of them. <laughs> yeah, just kept winning at the 17 5, $25,000 three year old level. Five of them. Uh, came back this year and they run him three and a half, and I don't think that was necessarily really his gig, but it did serve a purpose that got him fit. Now he goes six and a half, which I think more his gig, so he could be involved in this race too. I have him in the third spot. Six, seven, and one. And on to the second race. Uh, two year olds, maiden 10,000, going six furlongs, or about six furlongs, I think this is what they call yep. this. And uh, I went to the five Allison's Tiger, too. A horse that uh, just got beat by uh, Take a Back Road, Gambino, who came back around a big race in the stake. Uh, he drops into the $10,000 level. He looks awfully salty in here. Uh, Amadeo Perez takes the uh, mount there for Jody Ross and uh, like this uh, colt a lot in here. The second spot I put uh, into the clouds. This is a horse that uh, got beat 13 links in his last start for uh, Maiden 20, but they did break a track record that day. Uh, Proud Victor won by eight, almost nine yeah. links. Uh, cross rail court of the Terry Clyde Barn run a bang up race for second. This horse was third. I think he fits in here. And the third horse, third uh, spot, I put the two horse second Eclipse, a horse who ran a really good third in this level for ten thousand. Jumped up into that uh, twenty that turned out to be a really tough race with Proud Victor. Comes back to ten thousand dollar level. I think he's in here too. I put five, four, and two. Yeah, I like your top two. Uh, I'm gonna put the four into the clouds on top though. Yeah. Sort of showed good gate speed and uh, just wasn't fast enough to go with Proud Victor. Wasn't fast enough to break a track record. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely wasn't fast enough to go the opening quarter either. So he let that one go. And he gets stuffed in behind horses. Ran okay. Held well for third. Uh, I, I thought he, it was a, a good race. He dropped slightly in here for 10. Faces a lot of the same horses he ran against. But uh, I, I think this horse will just shoot off to the front today and, uh, and prove tough to catch. Uh, he's got the race under his belt going six furlongs. I think that's a big plus. And yep. I, I like her, him to win it or her to win it. I put the five Allison's Tiger two in for second. Uh, good third going three and a half furlongs. A couple of decent works. Nothing fast though. Uh, but definitely must respect the way this horse ran in its first two starts. And I put the seven horse, Sacred Cause, a debuter by Cause to Believe, and the mayor, Sacred Cat, who was very quick and yep. uh, raced in the Peter Redicott barn. Uh, the works are decent, and uh, the, I like, I've got to respect the connections. Craig McPherson, Richard Hamill. I, uh, this, it's not a tough spot to debut. Maybe this one can even jump up and win it. But uh, definitely with these two year olds, get down to the paddock, look at them. They'll really. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words sometimes. Yeah. Really get down there and have a good look at them, and uh, they will tell you whether they're alive Especially or not. Especially with the two-year-olds uh, about how they're handling it and everything, yeah, too. You yeah, you have a good look. You can see which ones are cool and composed. You can tell those are the ones going to run good, and the ones that are agitated and frisky, sometimes those aren't the ones that run very yeah. well. But I went four, five, and seven in the second race. On to the third. Got some uh, fillies and mares in here. 3,000 claimers. non is a three lifetime. Uh, six and a half furlongs is the trip. I went to the four-horse. Pay me notice, who's going to try and get back-to-back -back wins. I know he is shortening up 
or she is shortening up from a mile of 16th to six and a half, but she showed some speed, three starts back when she broke her maiden at this distance, and uh, hopefully she can sit on the outside of Haley's Cupcake Baker. Fools never know. Maybe Fools Never Know might be the fastest, but yeah. I think might get a good trip sitting off of that one. I'm hoping uh, this one can run down the speedy Fools Never Know. I went 4-1-5. and five. I think Haley's Cupcake Bake is the next best and might be able to win it as well, but uh, no standout in here. I went 4-1-5. One, I went with the 6 BMT, a horse that uh, did sit off of Fools Never Know yeah. last time, passed Fools Never Know, and Songs Royal Diamond came and uh, caught her at the end. Uh, I think it's her turn to graduate, so I got BMT on top. Uh, pay me notice, your top right. horse I have in the second spot. And uh, Haley's Cupcake Bake, uh, who's a very useful little filly. She's just a three-year-old. She keeps ending up having to run in, against fillies and mares. But uh, she's definitely very useful and one of my favorite names, hey, Haley's man, Cupcake Bake. Uh, six, four, and one for me in the third race. And on to the fourth, uh, Maiden 3000 for three-year-olds and up. And I've gone to the six, Fat Cat Diplomat out of the uh, Cindy Krasner barn. The C hot Cindy Krasner Cindy barn. Krasner <laughs> has had a tough start to this year. She was like one for 60, uh, won three races last weekend. Her horse are starting to find their spot, starting to uh, show a little more run. And uh, this horse, he was beaten by nine lengths last time. It was his first start of the year. Uh, Fernando had a fair bit of trouble with him. He was really green still. He was kind of got out on the turn and, and looking around and gawking at things. But the start under his belt, I think he fits right into this level. Uh, she has two of the tougher horses in here. Fernando rode both those horses the last time, and she likes to put him on the uh, six fat cat diplomat. Uh, I believe she tried to give him the liver horse here, so she likes that horse more than Wander About You, which is the horse that I put in the second spot. Uh, a couple of good seconds. Last time got a pretty rough trip. Another yeah. one, too, got pinched out pretty hard, uh, passing the wire for the first time. Uh, with these kind of horses, you need everything kind of go yeah, your way. You can't and, have any mistakes. Yeah, and, and when, when you have a rough trip like that, you, it's, it's just too much. Gets a little time off, comes back. I think Wander about used tough. And third spot, I put a horse, uh, GN Victor. Uh, Rob Gilker's going good this year. Ran him once out last year for Maiden 10. Didn't show much, but uh, he's been working along pretty good this year, 101. That fits in for Maiden 3000. Yeah, Amadeo one. Perez and uh, Gilker are... Uh, Lights out 44% this year together, so I have him in third spot. Six, nine, and three for me. Yeah, it's a tough race. I had yeah. no good, strong feelings in this fourth race. I landed on the four, two Hawks. Uh, closing up some ground, going three and a half furlongs last time. I uh, did break slowly, you know, bothered at the start. Cost her yeah. about three or four lengths and uh, then come running on late. So uh, I, I think he, with a work in 102 and change, might appreciate the extra ground. Maybe three and a half furlongs wasn't his best distance. And uh, maybe the six and a half furlong trip will help him. I put the one, no more drama in for second. This horse missed the break and got hung four deep the whole race. Still only got to beat two lengths to Sir Ron Rico. I know it was a uh, painfully slow race. It they went in 120. But uh, still, just at least this horse had a reason to go in 120. It was missed the break and four wide the whole yeah. race and still battling. Uh, pretty impressed with that. And this horse moves to the inside. So hopefully better fortunes for no more drama. And I put the three, the GN Victor horse in for yeah. third. Anytime you see a 101 work of this caliber, that's good enough. As you mentioned, fits, Amadeo yeah. and Gilker going well. High percentage outfit. So uh, definitely want, don't want to leave this one off the ticket. But in a very tough betting race, I went to the four, uh, two Hawks. I went four, one, and three. On to the fifth race, maiden five grander, uh, six and a half furlongs, three and up. Went the seven horse here, Bell Tower. Uh, I think this horse looks pretty live off of his yeah. runner-up effort to Shingen Bolt. Uh, it was just his first run at Hastings. That was for ten grand, been reduced to five. Uh, this horse coming back in two weeks, so it's the second start and. Uh, in three months, so you know this horse is going to run a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, put the eight-horse team, the Tiger, in for second. This horse will go in blinkers today. Uh, something has to, to give. This horse looks like he should have won a race by now, but is not. But hopefully being reunited with Chad Hoverson and, the, more importantly, the blinkers. Uh, this could yeah. be the key for Tame the Tiger. And I put the speedy number nine, Andrell, in for third. This horse got hung, on a, hung out on a fast pace last time. Uh, finished well back behind Bell Tower, but still, this horse had to go 21 and 4, 45 and change, and uh, took its toll on the last eighth of a mile. Yeah. Might get left alone today, or maybe not left alone, but won't have to go 21 and 4. And that could definitely enhance his chances of winning. So I went 7, 8, 9. I think those are the three horses here in the fifth. I agree with Bell Tower. Uh, was uh, yeah. just the one race at Belmont where he wasn't really a factor. Came here. All the, uh, the recently purchased Darley horses that Swift have have been running really good awesome. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dino makes. Uh, 
no quorums here. R running for maiden 10, first out, just got beat. Now in for five. He looks like a standout. The second spot I put uh, the three horse, Fast You Know, out of the Rob Van Overshop barn. This horse has been working along pretty good. He's got lots of works. He's going to have a good bottom in him. Uh, appears for the first out for 5,000. I think he, he can make some noise in here, so I have him in second. And the third spot, as you mentioned, Tame the Tiger, a horse that uh, has, has been running higher, drops to five, gets Chad back, blinkers on, a lot of positives there. I have him in the third spot. Seven, three, and eight for me. And on to the sixth race, uh, three-olds and up for 15,000. Another race where you could, uh, you know, make a case for a lot yeah, of these. Yeah, another toughie. Another tough race. These uh, 7,500 15s have all of a sudden gotten really tough with a couple of the higher races not going. Uh, I have the six pop artist on top. This guy likes to win, and uh, he likes to win at the $25,000 level. The 25s haven't been going, so he just, uh, as Dino has been doing lately, placing his horses very aggressively, puts him in for 15. Uh, I think he's uh, going to be a handful in here. I have him on top. The second spot, I have Storm and Proud Papa. Uh, another one led all the way for 25. Went into an optional 35 against uh, Herbie D, who was just a tick off the wow. track record that day. Uh, Jump up and kiss me, crew leader, yeah, Stormy Canuck. A few horses we're going to see later on in the card. Uh, now he's back in for 15. I think he's right into it. And the third spot, matchable. Horse that win for 12.5. Come back, uh, full power head, turn the tables on him. Just got uh, beat for 12.5. Uh, Gets uh, Richard Hamill aboard, who uh, rode him earlier on this meet. Have him in the third spot, six, seven, and five for me. Yeah, I agree with your top two, uh, pop artist. Uh, you don't need to say much about him. He's a classy horse that yeah. runs well all the time. Uh, the seven horse Storm and Proud Papa, another cool horse. He was five to one in an optional race, uh, optional claimer against Herbie D. I picked him that day, actually. Yeah. I mean, he's a nice horse, yeah. but he does drop here down to the 15. He's, those two look the best on paper. They're in form and they're, they're running big races. Yeah. I put the four horse uh, full power ahead into yeah. third. Uh, he's a horse that will be last early, but I think he'll come running on late. It looks like a lot of these horses want to lay close to the pace. Funny face, you got to be caddy, say fabulous, Prince Intent, matchable. There's a lot of front end pressure going to going to happen in yeah. here. Full power head's going to have a smile on his face at the back of the pack, and hopefully he might be able to win it if things if there's enough pace and in here. Falls that apart, force, yeah. pro, proud Sermon, proud Papa, and Pop Artist to have tough trips. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's going to need that kind of break. I think Full Power had to make him a winner, but it could happen in here. Yeah. But I went to six, seven, and four. I uh, definitely like the six horse pop artist. Agree with you, Drew. On the seventh race, uh, as you mentioned, allowance uh, feature here, an optional 40 going a mile and a 16th. Uh, I'm going to go to the one crew leader. I was between the one yeah. crew leader and the five three wood. I think those two are the best on paper by a mile. It's five yeah. one, one five for me, but I did go to crew leader. Just got a little bit more speed, maybe. Might be able to dictate the tempo. Uh, uh, ran a much better race last time when running third behind Herbie D and Jump Up and Kiss Me. So I think maybe he's turning the corner. Three Wood, great form on him. Good second, yeah. as Taylor said, in a very fast time. And he's likely going to be the favorite. And I put the three horse, Francis Finest, who seems to be uh, um, rapidly improving. His yeah. last two runs have been excellent. And uh, he's definitely going to get more of a test uh, this afternoon with True Leader and Three Wood. So uh, I went to the one. I went one, five, and three. I went with the five, uh, three wood yeah. of, uh, he's just been running two good races this year. As you mentioned, that second to uh, uh, Taylor's, uh, Taylor said over Senior Rojo and some nice That's horses he, he passed in there. It was a hell of a race. I put Stormy Canuck in second because he's kind of the only speed I see in here. So I think he'll, he'll be on the lead and he can probably kind of dictate the terms. If he gets it slow enough, he could be tough. I still don't think it's going to be enough to hold off three wood no matter how slow he goes. So I have uh, him in second and crew leader will be closing too. But maybe if Stormy Canuck gets the proper fractions, as I mentioned, I don't think he can hold off uh, jump up or three wood, but he might be able to hold off crew leader. So I went uh, five, two, and one. And on to the nightcap, three-year-olds and up, 4,000, non-two lifetime. And I've gone to the seven, JJ's Gypsy in here. Uh, horse that's due to uh, graduate at this level. Just got beat last time by the Hot Quattro's Raider, a horse that's in earlier, or in on uh, the Saturday card. Without him, you know, he kind of led the whole way and just got uh, caught late. I think it's his turn. Uh, the second spot I put Brandon's Courage. This is a horse that uh, broke his maiden for fun earlier this year, win by seven. Uh, then he got sent long. And that, that yeah, th th then he went long. Obviously, th things went a little bit wrong. He gave him some time off. He comes back. He's fresh. Worked in 49 and 3 the other day. I think he's freshened up and he could be tough in here. Johnson knows having a good meet. And in third spot, I put Gentleman Ben. 
Uh, horse who's uh, claimed by uh, Pat Jarvis last year. Pat always has good luck with horses that she uh, claims. And uh, he definitely fits at this level. Uh, had a second at this time. Last time he went long, wasn't really his gig. Goes back short, so uh, six, seven, six, and one for me. Yeah, I agree with your seven horse, JG's Gypsy Drew. Yeah. Uh, I think this horse is going to be tough to beat. And just you know, took a unlucky to run into Quatuor's Raider at the non two four thousand yeah. level. Uh, so, uh, but still, he almost battled him off, and uh, he was an easy second that day. So, I, I, I like JG's Gypsy to win it. I think he sits on the outside of Brandon's Courage, and uh, those two will likely be the pace setters in here. I put the yeah. four horse Dog Rock in for second, though. Uh, Went in blinkers, two starts back, ran a decent third behind JJ's Dipsy. Uh, but then was sent three and a half furlongs last time. I don't think he's a three and a half furlong horse. I think there was a bit of an error. Uh, but he gets back out to six and a half furlongs. I think he'll be more effective. And I put the two horse, Mass Mailing, who's had some tough trips against tougher company, uh, drops out of those 7,500 non two non threes into this non two for four. That's a lot easier race than running against Lookout Dubai and the Texas Buccaneer type of horses in Vernon Cat. I think he'll enjoy the class relief here. So look for him maybe to take the seed in behind the six and seven. But he'd be able to win it if those two hook up and go some crazy fractions. But I went seven, four, and two to close out the Sunday, uh, July 29th program at Hastings Race Course. Well, that'll do it for the analysis portion of uh, the show. Well, let's get on to the or quick recap of our selections on the Sunday program. Here's a look at mine. Uh, back in the first race, I went to the six horse, Quentin's Destiny. I went six, seven, and three. In the second race, I went to the four, into the clouds. I went four, five, and seven. And going back to the four again in the third race, I went to pay me notice. I went four, one, five. In the fourth race, number four, two hawks over the one and three. The fifth race, I went seven, eight, and nine. I went to the seven horse, Bell Tower. Sixth race, I went to the six pop artist in a very tough race, six, seven, and four. In the seventh race, I went to the one crew leader, hoping he can get back on form. I went one, five, and three. And in the finale, in race number eight, I went to the seven, JJ's Gypsy. I went seven, four, and two. And on to my picks. In the first, I agree, I went with the six, Quinton's Destiny over the seven and the one. In the second, I went with the five, Allison's Tiger two over the four and two. In the third, I went with the six, BMT over the four and the one. In the fourth race, I went to the six again, Fat Cat Diplomat over the nine and the three. In the fifth race, I went with the seven, Bell Tower over the three and eight. In the sixth, number six, Pop Artist over the seven and five. In the seventh, I went to the five, Three Wood over the two and the one. And in the nightcap, I agree with Mike, the seven, JJ's Gypsy over the six and the one. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in to the uh, Sunday edition of Handicapper's Corner. Hopefully you learned a little something and hopefully you can uh, make some money on the Sunday afternoon program at Hastings Race Course. So that'll do it for this edition of Handicapper's Corner. Once again, thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see you next week here on Handicapper's Corner from the Derby Bar and Grill. Great grandfather was right. I told you, Paul you Revere, now this is no bump steer. It's from a handicapper that's real sincere. I think it's Valentine, because on the morning line, the guy's got him bigger than five to nine.